Assalamualaikum. I am Deva, and you are watching your own channel, Audio Visual Books, with the Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. I am here. I hope that you have listened the previous videos of the same book in the playlist of my channel. And today we are going to start one of five page of PDF book. Let's start. Friday, October twenty nine, nineteen forty three. My dearest Kitty, Mister Clemen is out again. His stomach would not give him a moment's peace. He does not even know whether it is stop bleeding. He came to tell us he was not feeling well and was going home. And for the few time, he seemed really down. Mister and Missus Wendy have had more ragging battles. The reason is simple. They are broke. They wanted to sell an overcoat and a suit of Mr. Wendy's, but were un unable to find any buyers. His prices uh, were uh, were way too high. Some time ago, Mr. Clemen was talking about a uh, furrier he knows. This gave Mr. Wendy the idea of selling his wife's forecoat. It is made of rabbit skin, and he ha he has had it for seventeen years. Mr. Wendy. Got three twenty-five guilders for it, an enormous amount. She wanted, she wanted to keep the money herself to buy new clothes after the war, and it took some doing before Mr. Wendy could make her understand that it was desperately needed to cover household expenses. You can't imagine the screaming, shouting, stamping to feet, and swearing that went on. It was terrifying. My family stood holding its breath at the bottom of the stairs, in case it might be necessary to drag them apart. All the bickering, tears, and nervous tension have become such a stress and strain that I fall into my bed at night, crying and thanking my lucky stars that I have half an hour to myself. I am doing fine, except I have got no appetite. I keep hearing. Goodness, you look awful. I must admit, they are doing their best to keep me in condition. They are plying uh, me with uh, dextrose, cod liver oil, brewer's yeast, and calcium. My nerves often get the better of me, especially on Sundays. That is when I really feel miserable. That must be um, stifling, sluggish, leaden. Outside, you don't hear a single bird, and a uh, deathly An oppressive silence hangs over the house and clings to me, as if it were going to drag me into the deepest regions of the underworld. At times like this, father, mother, and Margaret don't matter to me in the least. I wander from room to room, climb up and down the stairs, feel like a songbird whose wings have been ripped off, and who keeps hurling itself against the bars of its dark cage. Let me out, where there is fresh air and laughter. A voice within me cries. I don't even bother to reply any more, but lie down on the divan. Sleep makes the silence, and the terrible fear go by more quickly. Helps pass the time, since it's impossible to kill it. Yours and. Wednesday, November three, nineteen forty-three. Dear Skitty, to take our minds off matters, <coughs> as well as <coughs> as well as to develop them, Father ordered a catalogue from a correspondence school. Margaret poured through the thick brochure three times <coughs> without finding anything. to her liking and within her budget father was easier to satisfy and decided to write and ask for a trial lesson in elementary latin no sooner said than done the lesson arrived margaret set to work enthusiastically and decided to take the course despite the expense it is much too hard for me though i had really like to learn latin to give me a new project as well father asked mr clemen for a children's bible so i could finally Learn something about the New Testament. Are you planning to give Anne a Bible for Hanukkah? Margaret asked, somewhat perturbed. Yes, well, maybe Saint Nicholas Day would be a better occasion. Father replied, 
Jesus and Hanukkah don't exactly go together. Since the vacuum cleaner's broken, I have to take an old brush to the rug every night. The windows close, the lights on, and the stoves burning, and there I am brushing away at the rug. That is sure to be a problem, I thought to myself the first time. There is bound to be complaints. I was right. Mother got a headache from the thick clouds of dust whirling around the room. Margaret's new Latin dictionary was caked with dirt and rim grumped that the floor did not look any different anyway. Small thanks for my pains. We have decided that from now on the stove is going to be lit at 7.30 on Sunday mornings instead of 5.30. I think it is risky. What will be the neighbors think of our smoking chimney? It is the same with the curtains. Ever since we first uh, went into hiding, they have been uh, tacked at firmly to the windows sometimes one of the ladies or gentlemen can't resist the urge to peek outside the result a storm of reproaches the response oh nobody will notice that is how every act of carelessness begins and ends no one will notice no one will hear no one will pay the least bit of attention easy to say but it is but is it true at the moment the temptatious and quarrel have subsided only dazzle and the wind dawns are still at loggerheads when dazzle is uh, talking about mrs wendy the, he invariably calls her in, uh, that old bat or that stupid hag and conversely mrs wendy uh, refers to our ever so learned gentleman as an old mate or a uh, or a touchy neurotic spinster etc the pot calling the kettle back black yours in monday evening november 8 1943 dear skitty if you were to read all my letters in one sitting you had be struck by the fact that they were written in a variety of moods it annoys me to be so dependent on the moods here in the next but i am not the only one we are all subject to them if i am engrossed in a book i have to rearrange my thoughts before i can mingle with other people because otherwise they might think i was strange as you can see i am currently in the middle of a depression i could not really tell you uh, what set it off uh, that I think it stems from the uh, from my cold eyes, which confronts me at every turn. This evening, when Beb was still here, the doorbell rang long and loud. I instantly turned white. My stomach churned, and my heart beat wildly. And my heart beat wildly, and all because I was afraid. At night, in bed, I see myself alone in uh, dungeon, uh, without um, father and mother. Or uh, I am roaming the street, or the annex is on fire, or they come in the middle of the night, or uh, to take us away, and I crawl under my bed in desperation. I see everything as if it were actually taking place, and to think it might all happen soon. Mip often says she envies, uh, she envies us, us because uh, we have uh, uh, such peace and quiet here uh, that may be true but she is obviously not thinking about our fear i simply can't imagine the world will ever be normal again for us i do talk about after the war but it is as if i were talking about a castle in the air something that can lie um, and never come true i see the eighth of us in the annex as if we were a patch of blue sky surrounded by a menacing black clouds the perfectly round spot on which we are standing is still safe but the clouds are moving in on us and the ring between us and the approaching danger is being pulled tighter and tighter we are surrounded by darkness and danger and in our desperate search for a way out we keep uh, bumping into each other we look at the fighting down below and the peace and the beauty ab up above in the meantime we have been cut off by the dark mass of clouds so that we can go neither up nor down it looms before us like an impenetrable wall 
trying to crush us but not yet able to i can only cry out and implore oh ring ring open wide and let us out your zen thursday november 11 1943 dear skitty i have a good title for this chapter ode to my fountain pen in memoriam my fountain pen was always one of my most prized possessions i valued it highly especially because it had a thick nib and i can only write neatly with thick nibs it had led a long and interesting fountain pen life which i will summarize below when i was 9 my fountain pen packed in cotton arrived as a sample of no commercial value all the way from hn um, where and my grandmother the kindly donor used to live i lay in bed with the flu while the february winds howled around the apartment house this splendid fountain pen came in a red leather case and i showed it to my girlfriends the first chance i got me and frank the proud owner of the fountain pen when i was 10 i was allowed to take the pen to school and to my surprise the teacher even let me write with it when i was 11 however my prayer had to be tucked away again because my 6th grade teacher allowed us to use only school pens and ink pots when i was 12 i started at the jewish lyceum and my fountain pen was um, given a new case in honor of the occasion not only did it have uh, room for the pencil it also had a zipper which was much more impressive when i was 13 the fountain pen went with me to the annex and together we have uh, raced through uh, countless diaries and compositions i had turned 14 and my fountain pen was enjoying the last year of its life with me when it was just after 5 on friday afternoon i came out of my room and was about to sit down at the table to write when i was roughly passed to one side to make room for margaret and father who wanted to practice their latin the fountain pen remained unused on the table while its owner sighing was forced to make do with a very tiny corner of the table where she began rubbing beans that is how we remove mold from the beans and restore them to their original state at a quarter to 6 i swept the floor dumped the dirt into a newspaper along with the rotten beans and tossed it into the stove a giant flame shot up and i thought it was wonderful that the stove which had been gasping its last breath had made such a miraculous recovery all was quiet again the latin students had left and i sat down at the table to pick up uh, where i had left off but no matter where i looked my fountain pen was nowhere in sight i took another look margaret looked ma- mother looked father looked doesn't look but it had vanished maybe it fell in the stove along with the beans margaret suggested no it could not have i replied but that evening when my fountain pen still had not turned up we all assumed it had been burned especially because uh, celluloid is highly inflammable our darkest fears were confirmed the next day when father went to empty stove and discovered the clip he used to fasten it to a pocket among the ashes not a trace of the gold nib was left it must have melted into stone father conjectured i am left with one consolation small though it may be my fountain pen was uh, cremated just as i would like to be some day yours then wednesday november 17 1943 dear rest kitty recent events have the house rocking on its foundation owing to an outbreak of uh, diphtheria diphtheria at babs and she would not be allowed to come in contact with us for 6 weeks without her the cooking and shopping will be very difficult not to mention how much 
we will miss her company mr clayman is still in bed and was has eaten nothing but gruel uh, for three weeks mr coglor is up to his neck in work margaret sends her latin lessons to a teacher who corrects and then returns them she is registered under bab's name the teachers the teacher is very nice and witty too i bet he is glad to have such a smart student dazzle is in art turmoil and we don't know why it all began with dazzle saying nothing when he was upstairs he did not exchange so much as a word with either mr or mrs vandon we all noticed it this went on uh, for a few days and then mother took the opportunity to warn him about mrs vandy who could make life miserable for him dazzle said mr vandon had started the silent treatment and he had no intention of breaking it i should explain that yesterday was november 16 and the first anniversary of his living in the annex in the annex the mother received a plant in honor of the occasion but mrs vandon who had eluded to the date for weeks and made no bones about the fact and that she thought dazzle should treat us to dinner received nothing instead of making use of opportunity to thank us for the first time uh, for unselfishly taking him in he did not utter a word and on the morning of the 16th when i asked him whether i should offer him my con- uh, congratulations or my condolences he replied that either one would do mother having cast herself in the role of peacemaker uh, made no headway whatsoever and the situation finally ended in a draw i can say without exaggeration that uh, dazel has definitely got a screw loose we often laugh to ourselves because he has no memory no fixed opinions and no common sense he is amused us he has amused us more than once by trying to pass uh, on the news he has just heard since the message invariably gets and uh, gob uh, garbled uh, in transmission furthermore he answered every uh, reproach uh, reproach or okay uh, accusation with a load of uh, fine one or promises um, which he never manages to keep derman hat in an gross and gist yuna is so clean one tartan that is a well known expression the spirit of the man is great how puny are his deeds josen saturday november 27 1943 dear as kitty last night just as i was falling asleep henley suddenly appeared before me i saw her there dressed in rags her face thin and worn she looked at me with such sadness and reproach in her enormous eyes that i could read the message in them oh and why have you deserted me help me help me rescue me from this hell and i can't help her i can only stand by and watch while other people suffer and die all i can do is pray to god to bring her back to us i saw henley and no one else and i understood why i misjudged her was not mature enough to understand how difficult it was for her she was devoted to her girlfriend and it must um, have seemed as though i were trying to take her away the poor thing she must have felt awful i know because i recognized the feeling in myself i had an occasional flash of understanding but then got selfishly wrapped up again in my own problems and players it was mean of me to treat her that way and now she was looking at me also oh, helplessly with her pale face and beseeching eyes if only i could help her dear god i have everything i could wish for well fate has has her uh, in its deadly clutches she was as devout as i am maybe even more so and she too wanted to do what was right but then why have i been chosen to live while she is probably going to die what is the difference between us why are we now so far apart to be honest i had not thought of her for months no for at least a year i had not forgotten her entirely and yet it was not until i saw her before me and that i thought of all her sufferings 
or Henley. I hope that if you live to the end of the war and return to us, I will be able to take you in and make up for the wrong I have done for you. But even if I were ever in a position to help, she would not need it more than she does now. I wonder if she ever thinks of me and what she is feeling. Merciful God, comfort her so that at least she would not be alone. <coughs> oh, if only you could tell her I am thinking of her with compassion and love. It might help her. Go on. I have got to stop dwelling on this. I would not get me anywhere. I keep seeing her enormous eyes and they haunt me. Does Henry really and truly believe in God? Or has religion merely been fostered upon her? I don't even know that. I even took uh, the trouble to ask, Henley, Henley, if only I could take you away, if only I could share everything I have with you. It is too late. I can't help or undo the wrong I have done. But I have never forget her again. I will always pray for her. Yours then. Monday, December 6, 1943. Dearest Kitty, the closer uh, it got to sit Nicholas Day, the more we all thought back to last year's festively decorated basket. More than anyone, I thought it would be terrible to skip a celebration this year. After long deliberation, I finally came up with an idea, something funny. I consulted Raymond uh, a week ago. We set to work writing a verse for each person. Sunday, every uh, Sunday evening at a quarter to eight, we trooped uh, upstairs carrying the big laundry basket, which had been decorated uh, with the uh, cutouts and bows made of pink and blue paper, blue carbon paper. On top was a large piece of uh, brown wrapping um, paper with the note attached. Everyone was rather amazed at the sheer size of the gift. I removed the note and read it loud. Once again, St. Nicholas Day has even come to our hideaway away. It would not be quite as June, I fear, as the happy day we had last year. Then we were hopeful, no reason, no doubt. The optimism would win the bout. And by the, by the time this year came around, came round, we had all be free and as and sound. Still, let's not jog it. It is St. Nicholas Day, though we are, we have nothing left to give away. We will have to find something else to do. So everyone please look in their shoe. As each person took their own shoe out of the basket, there was a roar of laughter. Inside each shoe was a little wrapped package addressed to its owner. Yours. Dearest Kitty, a bad case of flu has prevented me from writing to you until today. Being sick here is dreadful. With every cough, I had to duck under the blanket once, twice, three times and try to keep from coughing anymore. Most of the time, the tickle refused to go away, so I had to drink milk with honey, sugar or cough drops. I get dizzy just thinking about all the uh, cures i have been subjected to sweating out the fever steam treatment wet compress dry compresses hot drinks swabbing my throat and uh, ling still heating pad uh, hot water bottles lemonade and every two hours the thermometer will these remedies really make you better the worst part was when mr dosa decided to play doctor and lay his um, uh, pomade head on my bare chest to listen to the sounds. Not only did his hair tickle, but I was embarrassed. Even though he went to school 30 years ago and does have some kind of medical degree. Why should he lay his head on my heart? After all, he is not my boyfriend. For that matter, he would not be able to tell a healthy sound from an unhealthy one. He had have, uh, to have this, his ears uh, cleaned first, since he is becoming alarming hard of hearing. But enough about my illness. I am fit as a 
fiddle again. I have grown almost half an inch and gained two pounds. I am pale but itching to get back to my books. Osna Homs Vesi, the only word that will do here by way of exception. We are all getting on well together. <coughs> no scrabble, and though that probably, probably would not last uh, long, there has been such peace and quiet in this house for at least six months. Bab is still in isolation, but any day now her sister will no longer be contagious. For Christmas, and we are getting extra cooking oil and candy and molasses for um, Hanukkah. Mr. Dozel gave uh, Mrs. Um, Van Don and Mother a beautiful cake which he had asked uh, Mabe to bake. On top of all the work she has to do, Margaret and I received a brooch uh, made out of a penny, all bright and shiny. I can't really describe it, but it is lovely. I also have a Christmas present or um, for uh, May Pam Grab for a whole month. I have saved up the sugar I put on my hot cereal and um, Mr. Clement has used it to have uh, fondant made. The weather is drizzly and overcast and the stove th stinks and the food lies heavily on uh, our stomachs uh, producing a variety of rumbles. Rumbles. The war is at an impasse. Spirits are low. Yours then. Friday, December 24, 1943. Dear Kitty, as I have written you many times before, moods have a tendency to affect us quite a bit here, and in my case, it has been getting worse lately. Himmel Hodge, uh, George, uh, George Zend, uh, Zoot Ordi, Betropt, a famous line from Goethe, on top of the word, or in the depth of despair. Certainly applies to me. I am on the top of the world when I think of how fortunate we are and compare myself to other Jewish children and in the depth of despair when, for example, Mr. Clement comes uh, by and talks about uh, Jopi's hockey club, uh, canoe trips, school plays and afternoon teas with friends. I don't think I am jealous of uh, Jopi, but I long uh, to have a really good time for once and to laugh so hard it hurts. We are uh, stuck in this house like lepers, especially during winters and Christmas and New Year's holidays. Actually, I should not even the, be writing this since it makes me seem to so ungrateful, but I can't keep everything to myself, so I will repeat what I said at the beginning. Paper is more patient than people. Whenever someone comes in from outside with the wind in their clothes and the cold on their cheeks, I feel like burying my head under the blankets to keep from thinking when will be when will we be allowed to breathe fresh air again? I can't do that. On the contrary, I have to hold my head up high and put a bold face on things. But the thoughts keep coming anyway. Not just once, but over and over. Believe me, if you have been shut up for a year and a half, I can't get to be too much for you sometimes. But feelings can't be ignored. No matter how unjust or ungrateful they seem, I long to ride a bike, dance, whistle, look at the world, feel young and know that I am free and yet I can't let it show. Just imagine what would happen if all eight of us were to feel sorry for ourselves for, or walk around with the discontent clearly visible on our faces. Where would that get us? I sometimes wonder if anyone will ever understand what I mean. If anyone will ever overlook my ingratitude and not worry about whether or not I am Jewish and merely see me as a teenager badly in badly in worry about weather or badly in need of some good uh, plain fun i don't know and i would not be able to talk about it with anyone since i am sure i had start to cry crying and can bring relief as long as you don't cry alone 
is what all my theories and efforts i miss every day and every hour of the day having a mother who understands me that is why with everything i do and write and i imagine the kind of mom i had like to be to my children later on the kind of mom who does not take everything people say too seriously but who does take me seriously i find it difficult to describe what i mean but the word mom says it all do you know what i have come up with in order to give me the feeling of calling me calling my mother sometimes that sounds like mom i often call her mom say sometimes i shorten it to moms an imperfect mom i wish i could honor her by removing the s it is a good thing she does not realize this since it would only make her unhappy well that is enough of that my writing has raised me somewhat from the depths of despair yours and it is the day after christmas and i can't help anything about pimp and the story he told me this time last year i did not understand the meaning of his words then as well as i do know if only he had bring it up again i might be able to show him i understood what he meant i think pim told me because he who knows and the intimate secrets of so many others needed to express his own feelings for once pim never talks about himself and i don't think market has any inkling of what he has been through poor pim he can't fool me into thinking he is for, uh, he has forgotten that girl he never will it has uh, it is made him uh, very accommodating since he is um, uh, not blind to mother's fault uh, to mother's faults i hope i am going to be a little like him without having to go through what he has and please like and subscribe we will see the next pages in the next video hope so you have enjoyed the audio visual books thank you